Right. The Eden Rivers Trust has commissioned me to make a film about healthy rivers in a working landscape. I think they want something which will show people the types of things farmers are doing across the Eden catchment to make rivers healthy. So I've done my research and I can tell you that the Eden catchment covers an area the size of 300,000 football pitches. And there are three times as many sheep as humans live in the Eden catchment. But what makes a healthy river? It's a complete mystery to me. Hello? Who are you? I'm one of the river detectives from Shab School. I heard you've got a little bit of a mystery on your hands. Yeah, but what? Don't worry about it. River Detectives know all about healthy rivers. We'll make your film for you. Trust us. We'll be right back. River Detectives are good! We're the River Detectives and we've been conducting an investigation to find out what makes a healthy river. In a rural environment, we be on field trips farms, witnessing that fishing and weaving to be farmers. And here are some of our main discoveries. Right, we need to talk about fences and buffer strips along the river. You see, they are good for the river because they help stop the animals getting into it. Yes, and the water drains more slowly into the river, which helps reduce flooding downstream. Rocks and boulders are good for the river because they help slow it down. They also provide places for river creatures to live. In our investigation, we really have left no stone unturned. The river detectives have uncovered some interesting facts about weirs. You see, weirs aren't great news for the river because they stop migrating fish getting back upstream to breed. Yes. Also, the river level is higher above the weir, so flooding is more likely upstream of them. Buffer strips also help to keep the river healthy by preventing slurry and other fertilisers from reaching the river. But why do we need to keep cows and sheep out of the river anyways? Well that, my dear Watson, is elementary. Cows and sheep trample soil into the river, which means there is less oxygen in the water for the little river creatures to breathe. Oh, but my name's not Watson. Who is Watson? Yes, sheep and cows also eat riverbank plants. Hmm, and riverbank plants are really important for rivers because their roots hold the riverbank together and helps reduce the amount of erosion. Tree roots do the same. Ah, yes. I'm glad you mentioned trees. Trees provide excellent habitat for creatures and create shade over the river. Which is really good for fish. Fish love shade. <gasps> Talking about fish, we've made a film to show you what sort of river conditions fish and river creatures like best. Here at our River Detectives HQ, we haven't had access to a drone or a helicopter. However, we didn't let that stand in our way. We have produced you our very own, quite low-tech aerial images of a riverscape to help us describe the conditions that are the best for healthy river landscapes. The whole team got involved with developing this animation, which took us the best part of the day to produce. We are extremely pleased to be able to report that throughout the whole production of this picture, not one single drop of paint was spilt on the carpet. Not one drop, and we used a lot of paint. Let's start by looking at some of the conditions that can cause an unhealthy river, and that river creatures don't much care for. You'll see that there aren't many plants in the river, in fact it's all rather bare. Also, the river banks are very steep and smooth, and the river has been straightened in the past. All of which means that it will run very fast, too fast for
for many of the creatures to live in. There's nothing in this river to slow it down. Not a river bank tree, not a boulder. It's a very bare river which provides very little habitat for fish and other river creatures. Can you see the tractor? It's working right up to the river. Because it's so heavy, it will damage the river banks. And if its tires compact the soil, then rainwater will wash more quickly off the land and into the river, which can cause flooding further downstream. Uh-oh! Look at that cow. It looks like it's been grazing very close to that river. And now look, she's going to... No! She's actually pooing in the river. Cow milk is toxic to river creatures. This is really bad news for this poor river. Now look! The tractor is on the move again. Some of the soil is washing into the river. That's not good news for the poor creatures. You see, soil covers up areas where fish lay their eggs. Not to mention where all incredible invertebrates live. As the soil will have been fertilised, it will also make the river toxic. Not only that, the soil in the river reduces the amount of oxygen in the water, makes it really difficult for the poor river creatures to breathe. We hope you're keeping up with us. There's a lot of information. People say walls have ears, so let's imagine that farmyards can speak. Gutters on farmyard buildings help rivers to be healthy by collecting rainwater what has not been mixed with any feces or leftover muck so it's clean enough to go into our taps at home. If the slurry gets into the river, it'll kill the fish because all the dirt will suffocate them. So like, on a farmyard, you need the guttering and drains, um, drainage systems the, to keep the clean and dirty water separate so then they don't mix. Well, to keep the muck away from the river, you can either put a roof on your shed that you keep the muck in and that'll stop it from overflowing and going into the river. Or you can just put it underground with slatted floors so that it can all drain down into that so that it won't mix up and become a problem. Meanders help the river because it provides more habitat for different um, species of fish because some um, fish like the fast water to live in and some like to live in slow water. A straightened river is bad because fish need different types of fast and slow bits in river but in straightened rivers it's just all fast so not many fish can survive in them. Driving on fields in wet weather. Well, it's best to try and reduce the number of times tractors are on the land during wet weather to help prevent the soil from being damaged. We need to talk about poo. Slurry, muck, silage and pesticides are all really bad for rivers. Obviously, it makes the river water less healthy for humans. That's why it's best to keep a roof over your muck and slurry. That way, it stops rainwater getting in it. Added rainwater equals more liquid, which means even more poo. The next thing you know, there's so much poo, there has to be lots of slurry spreads in winter. In winter, plants aren't growing, and so nutrients are more likely to end up washed away by the rain and end up in the river. Let's see what we can do to help make this a healthier river. As you can see, we've re-meandered the river. Yes, we've put the natural bends back. We've given it its wiggle. This will help create a mix of shallow, fast-flowing and deep, slow-flowing areas, allowing gravel and plants to settle on the riverbed, which provides homes for wildlife 
and forming deep pools that larger fish can live in. All this will also help slow the flow of water as it travels downstream towards towns. Look, the cows aren't feeding by the riverbank anymore. This sturdy fence has created a buffer strip. A buffer strip protects the river from things that are not very good for it. Like farm animal poo and loose soil. And gives that strip of land right next to the river a bit of a breather. That means no more poo or soil in the river. Hooray! Hooray! The buffer strip also stops the cows from trampling the riverbanks and eating the plants growing there. The bushy trees growing there now are great. Their roots help hold the riverbank together and they provide nice shady spots for the fish. Win, win, win. 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 The river now has natural boulders in it. Boulders are great in a river like this. They vary the speed of the water. Variety is very important in a river. Some creatures need fast running water, others like slow running water. It looks like this river is beginning to provide a fantastic habitat for fish and other river wildlife to thrive. More meanders, more plants and trees and less pollution all makes for a healthier river. And a healthy river equals happy fish and their friends and happy humans. And that's all there is to it. Simple, River Detective's work here is done. Are you clear now at what makes a healthy river? Well, yes, I, I am now. Thank you very much. Right then, River Detectives. Let's solve our next river mystery. Over and out. Mm -hmm.